be the love that dwells between us. God of hope who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God of hope, the rock we stand upon, be the center, the focus of our lives, always and particularly this Advent season time. Lord, you were favorable to your land and you restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely 
salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. So for, I know at least for Trinity folks, that was the Psalm that we used on Sunday. Uh, I did not do as good a job reading it as our sixth grader while well, Cantor did, uh, but I did my, did my best. Um, the theme for, for tonight is peace. And that seemed like a good psalm for the purposes. The question of peace, or rather the lack thereof, um, is an important one in the prophets. Uh, at least since the eighth century before Christ, uh, the prophet Micah complains um, of pr other prophets. The prophets like to complain about other prophets. It's, we all complain about other people who do the same job we do. Um, he complains about other prophets who cry out that there is peace as long as they have something to eat. Um, basically, when, and when their basic needs are cared for, they declare that everything is fine, uh, and they ignore those who, who uh, have nothing. Maybe the most famous peace complaint comes from the prophet Jeremiah, uh, chapter 6, 14, is part of a long complaint about unjust gain in his time. He speaks of these nameless folks in Jerusalem. They have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. This apparently was like one of Jeremiah's greatest hits. He repeats it again in chapter 8, verse 11, so sort of reprises it there. And this is not just Jeremiah talking, his contemporary Ezekiel, um, who it, Jeremiah and Ezekiel are very different people, but they lived and worked around the same time. Ezekiel says something very similar from exile. The pe prophets have misled God's people saying peace when there is no peace. It's easy to say God is the God of peace, to say God wants peace, to say we should pray for peace. Those things are true, but simply saying them doesn't make those things happen. And all too often, those statements are used to shut down, talk about the problems that are actually happening. The problems that Micah describes, that Jeremiah describes, that Ezekiel des describes, where human beings, God's people, are going without, without whatever, whether it is food, clothing, dignity, the things that are required for peace to happen. You can say peace all you want, but that doesn't make it happen. In the 20th century, with world wars and genocide on a scale that we couldn't have imagined prior, uh, Isaiah 11 became a popular chapter. The, the peaceable kingdom, you know, the lion shall lie down with the lamb. And um, it, it's somewhat shocking if you, if you look at the history of the interpretation of Isaiah. Really, this chapter was not very important for the first, I don't know, 3,000 years Isaiah was around. It's, it's only, it took the, the horrors of the 20th century for us to latch onto it. Um, and it's a beautiful image. I love it. Um, but it's perhaps also utopian the same way those who cry peace when there is no peace are utopian. This doesn't accomplish anything. What's needed is something like what we said in the psalm. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Righteousness and peace will kiss. It's not enough just to say peace. There must be work for righteousness to happen. Another image from Isaiah might be helpful in thinking of this. Isaiah chapter 2. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. 
there is work in turning those implements of warfare into tools of feeding one another. Or we might say in less poetic terms, cutting your military budget to increase your food budget. There's work that the people of Israel are called to do, investing their time in making sure there is enough for everyone. That's the kind of righteousness and peace kissing each other that's present in Psalm 85. If there is to be peace, there must be justice for all. Now, saying that is not exactly proclaiming Christ crucified and risen, and you could easily say that's just a call to stand up and fight for my own utopian vision, Pastor Tim's ideological call to arms this Advent. Um, I'm not calling for that, though. Rather, the idea is there will always be someone, some ones, who say peace, peace, when there is none. We, as those who wait for the Lord, are called to work to make peace happen now when it is so obviously absent. As Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the peacemakers. The work happens now. We do not know what awaits. We have faith that it is something like the peaceable kingdom, peace in the resurrection with God. But we also know for certain right now that God has placed us here to follow Jesus right now. And that there are those who cry peace when there is none. In this season of waiting for the Lord, we do not wait idly. Often we say we prepare during Advent. How many children's sermons I've heard or given where I've said, what do you do when you're getting ready for someone to come over? Of course, you have to stretch your imagination these days since you generally tell people you can't come over. There are COVID restrictions. But if you could do such a thing, you don't just wait idly for them to come, at least not at my house, because my house is a mess. And my house needs picking up and cleaning up and the bathroom needs tidying. And we haven't vacuumed the floor lately and it hasn't been properly prepared to have visitors. We wait for our friends to come, but we are active. That is the kind of waiting that we do. The work we do to prepare is that work of righteousness now peace so that when the friends arrive, we can enjoy one another rather than, and we all have that one friend who, when you show up, they put you to work doing the cleaning that they should have done before you got there. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other, the psalm says. Let us do the work of peace knowing that that work does not win us salvation with God, but rather is the work that God's salvation has assigned to us while we wait for that peaceable kingdom that can't happen this side of the resurrection, but that we trust awaits for us on the other side of it. Amen. Amen. Do na na bis pacem pacem. Do na na bis pacem. Do na do bis pacem. Do na na do bis Oh
Let us pray. <clears throat> On the second Wednesday of Advent, let us pray for this weary world, responding to each petition with words from today's Psalm. In mercy, restore us. Come to the church, O oh God, assist our bishops and our pastors. I'm, I'm actually have to apologize while I'm praying that I can't see the screen very well, Greg. Would you Would like you me like to, to take it on your way? What'd you say? Would you like me to do it? I can see it fine. Yes, please. It's all blurry on my screen. I can all barely right. make out the that's, word. That's right. We'll come to the church of faithful God, assist our <laughs> Bishop William, our pastors, Joy and Timothy, and all who minister in the church. Show us what is your way and where are your paths and awaken all the baptized to the guidance of your Holy Spirit. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, In mercy restore, us. restore us. Come to the Jewish people, O oh covenant God, at this, their festival of Hanukkah, which begins tomorrow night, end the world's anti-Semitism and bring peace to Jerusalem. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to the earth, O oh creating God. As the seasons change, protect all that lives. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to the nations, O sovereign God. Inspire governmental officials to strive for peace within their land and between countries. Remember the people of Afghanistan and Ethiopia. Guide the nations toward cooperative efforts when facing global issues. O God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to our country, O righteous God. Teach us how to end discrimination and to value diversity. Bring political parties into helpful conversation with each other. Assist the unemployed and uphold people with physical and developmental disabilities. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to all who are facing the coronavirus, O oh compassionate God. Protect the vulnerable. Heal the sick. Embrace the dying. Sustain medical workers. Prepare and distribute a vaccine. End this scourge. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to all who suffer, O oh merciful God. Empower us to feed the hungry in our nation and around the world. Gather into your healing embrace those who are afraid, lonely, sick, or struggling with depression. We pray especially for those who we gathered tonight, name either aloud or in our hearts. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come, O oh tender hearted God, to each one of us and receive our silent prayers. O 
O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to us, O oh eternal God, as you came to the saints. We remember especially St. Nicholas, whose feast day was Sunday, and his care for the children, and St. Lucia, whose feast is this coming Sunday, and those we name now before you. Bring us with all those who have died in faith. Bring us with them through our wilderness and into the fulfillment of your promises. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. What a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus. safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus. leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? everlasting arms I have blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms leaning Jesus leaning Jesus safe and secure from all alarms leaning Jesus leaning Jesus leaning on the everlasting arms Creator of the stars, bless our advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill us with love. The unexpected spirit guide our journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, thanks, Pastor Tim. Yeah. I really couldn't read those prayers at no, all. <laughs> I, I, I figured that when you said that, it reminded me of Doing, doing a funeral when I was an intern and my supervisor, his, his book blew out of his hand or something <laughs> and at the graveside. And it was like, all right, well, I've got the book. So here we go. I've got my own. Oh, that's right. I guess I'm doing this part. All right. That's right. I would have been making it up otherwise. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. Well, it's really lovely to worship with everyone again this week. I thank you for being able to join this evening. Hello to Greg and Pastor Tim. <laughs> Hello. Um, Dixie's joining us and she's from Bethel and she's the one who provided my soup tonight. Ah, okay. And I'm what kind of soup was it? What kind of soup was it? It Tur was chicken tortilla soup. Ah. Very good. It was great. <laughs> That's the first time I'd ever fixed it. <laughs> so I'm I'm glad for that confirmation. Thank you, Pastor Joy. Um, is there anything we want to like? Any? I didn't really think about time together. I know last time we just wanted to 
connect and say hi and get to know each other. And I don't know, do you have any good questions, Pastor Tim, that people could Ooh, good, good questions. I can figure out why, yeah, why is there evil? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I, I, I did want it in that the hymn there, the, the, the Dona Nobis Pachum, that's one we've used at Trinity a couple of times. Um, but the, the artwork is, is specific to tonight that sculpture is outside of the United Nations it, based on um, Isaiah 2. Um, and that, that other piece of art there is, is the name of the picture is righteousness and peace kiss each other. So it's that, that scene there is where that's from. And the other, even the other things are, are Advent visuals there at inside of Trinity. We've got that one banner that has the, those from him to bring light, love, peace, and hope. Um, so that's where that was. But those, those two pieces of art that I've loved that statue, especially ever since I've seen it. Not generally a big fan of sculptures of any kind, mostly because I can't make them. Um, it's, it's, too, it's too hard. So I just don't, you know, or, but at that one, it's, it's really, it's a neat image that that sword bent so hard as he's forging it into a plow right outside of the building. Yeah. That was a powerful statue. I like how you brought art in, art into the pictures. So what's the image uh, behind in the waiting, waiting song, the broken off tree that's right dead center in the picture? Yeah, that's a tree in the forest outside my house. And within, I don't know if you noticed, but within the, within that dead trunk, another tree is sprouting up. No, I hadn't seen that. Okay, there you go. Thank you. I appreciate it, Greg. Sure. Well, You're muted, Pat. <laughs> so do you think the roots are going to go down through the tree or the tree will fall over? What's going to happen to that tree? That's well, I thought about that. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, the, the idea I had was that it, it's hopeful, you know, from this broken yeah. um, body, another being. But yeah, it's, pr it's probably going to be limited. Although I don't know, tree roots are pretty powerful. So yeah. possibly um, find a way through there. I don't know. But interesting. We'll leave, we'll leave that up to God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my uh, granddaughter's, her, her major is bas basically the soil. I don't know how she got interested in that, but dirt. She, dirt. Yeah. She, <laughs> she says that all the trees' roots help each other. Yeah. Right. They're not fighting amongst themselves, they're all helping. Right. Which I think that's so interesting what's happening underground and what happens above the ground are two different yeah. things. Uh, <clears throat> Greg, the tree growing within, is it the same kind of tree? I don't know. I don't think so. But it might be. I didn't notice. Hmm. Could be something new. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever seed fell in there. Yeah, yeah. whatever <laughs> fell into it. <laughs> That's pretty fascinating to me. Yeah. Next time I'm out your way, I'm going to drive past your house. No, it's not at my house. It's actually in Marquette Woods. Oh, okay. On a trail that I take, yeah. You're guaranteeing that we'll all be back next week so we can look at the tree. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can can you share can you share your yeah, screen and share show screen. it to us? Show that show that here. Okay. I'll I'll try to make it stop. Let's see. Hold on a second. Yeah, just have a static image and share it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Whoa, whoa. When you can always is watch that on Mar is that on Marquette Trail then? Uh it's it's on the yeah, Indian it Boundary ah. Trail. Oh, I oh, no. so oh, that. Oh, I see that. again now that yeah. you now that tell me that. I realized yeah. I thought that was like way behind it, but no, it's uh -huh. literally in it. Uh -huh. I think yeah, it I is. See. I think that's an oak tree and an oak tree sprouting out of it. If I... Yeah, it looks like an looks oak like tree oak. coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Hmm. 
So where, it looks like a road's back there. Is that a trail or a road? That's, uh, that is Locust. That's as you're coming into Miller. On, okay. On Locust or whatever that is, uh, that becomes Locust. So yeah, the, the trail comes down over here and crosses um, that access road. And so yeah, it's not far off. Well, that's not, not right by County Line Road, right? No, it's uh, Marquette Park, which is- Oh, uh, Marquette Park, road. okay. Yeah. So this this is the road that comes like if you come down if you come down Grand and then you know kind of goes into the park. Yeah. Okay. This is that road which becomes Locust when you cross Montgomery. Oh. Okay. So that's close to the church, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Not far from the church. Greg, would it be much trouble to show the two sculptures that Pastor was talking about again? Uh, let's see here. Oops. You let me share my screen. It, it might be if it's easier to let me share my screen. I can pull up the. Sure. Let's see. I think actually, I, I shouldn't have said that. Now I can't find the picture. <laughs> well, if it's too much trouble, I can always Google it. <laughs> it honestly, if if you if you Google um, UN plowshare, you know, spears into plow or swords into plowshares. Mm -hmm. Um, you, it, it, it is a gift of the Soviet Union to the, to the United Nations. Wow. So you can, also, you can search Soviet so, swords into plowshares. Wow. That's, uh, yeah, it was an interest. It was an interesting choice to pick that, you know, yeah, it was, it was made during one of the, the, the warmer rather than colder periods there where the use of religious art was not banned. Um, so, hmm. that, but that was a, Oops. that was their gift to the UN. I don't remember when they made it. Um, yeah. Is it just the one guy hammering the sword? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there's, there's no, there is nothing else to it. And it's a fairly, I don't know, you're, if you don't know Soviet art, it's a rather unusual piece for that period. Um, so, much, so much of what they did had to be in a very specific style or it wouldn't get that the party declared what was considered good, you know, right. what what one person's and it had had nothing to do with ideology. It was one person's bad taste, but they enforced it on everybody, and it was <laughs> wow. Well, I have a question. I I hear that I'm doing the reflection next week, and is there a theme for next week, or do? Do we know that yet? We did peace tonight and, and joy. What was your theme last week? Hope. Hope. Okay. So don't pick one of those two. Okay. No. Well, <laughs> uh, joy, do you mind if we pick joy? <laughs> I didn't pick joy. I oftentimes don't pick joy for specific reasons like this, but yes, you go right uh, ahead. Uh, well, I, as I as I recall, the the third candle on the Advent wreath sometimes is pink to symbolize yes. joy, right? Yep. So shall we do that next week, or do you, does someone have a better idea or another idea? I love that idea. I think it's a lovely idea. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll see if I can find something. And next next week's worship is. Um, is the Holden evening prayer pattern. It will, we'll be doing it this way um, on Zoom, but it, uh -huh. it is Holden evening prayer. Um, I know Tsu Ping, some of you are, might, might have been contacted by her to do bits or bits for that. She's working on that. I think she's still here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that'll be same format as tonight, but a little bit different musically. Uh -huh. uh, Trinity people, I know we know that one fairly well. Not quite the same as doing it in person, but doing something. Better than nothing. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> I especially enjoyed listening to What a Fellowship, yeah. What a Joy Divine. Yeah. I well, hadn't heard that in a while. That was great, mm -hmm. wasn't it, Dixie? <laughs> yes, indeed. It was one of my mother's favorites. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's a good standard. Yeah, it, it is. It sure is. <laughs>
kind of upbeat and pleasant way to listen towards the ending of the, the program itself. Mm -hmm. I always have a story about that, that hymn. There was a church in the Gettysburg area that would play it far too slowly. Oh, and no. it was one, one of the, a, a fellow who was on the staff at the seminary was often subbing there and they played it too much and they played it too slowly. Uh, and his title at the seminary was director of lifelong learning, but people would always misspell it director of lifelong leaning. <laughs> <laughs> and so that he picked that as the, the slow version of that as his theme song it was just singing leaning. <laughs> I'm leaning on the everlasting and I'm the director of lifelong leaning and just it takes forever to get through this hymn and I'm leaning. And, you know. I think I'm encouraged to doing it too fast because I can barely spit the words out. But yeah, you got it. You you can't do it too. That's one that you get to a certain. You get slow enough, and it's just like, oh God, please, yeah. just <laughs> get on with it. I was kind of singing along with you, um, Greg, realizing that I was muted. <laughs> I would not have dared to do so otherwise. Uh, it would have been painful. <laughs> well, Dixie, that's that's one of the benefits of being of worshiping online is you can mute yourself <laughs> and sing your heart out. Yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't matter what whether you're on pitch or not. <laughs> and, and don't have to wear a mask. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But I have to double check that I'm muted. Before I... <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm glad I was a little late tuning in because I'm often inept in uh, getting things settled. And thank you, Pastor Joy, for um, sending me that quick email. We were kind of late eating dinner and I was rushed and I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to type in HTTPS slash slash. I'll, I'll never get there. Then I re realized I could tap on it and it came up for me. Yeah, that's oh great. Boy. Yeah, it's tough to learn all this stuff for some of us. Yeah, but it's challenging. So true. But you're doing it. That's the most exciting part. <laughs> yeah. And we can still see each other. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. It's worth the effort. <laughs> it is. Well, I'm glad I got tuned in. And it's nice to, to greet and say hello to all of you. Yes. Oh. You Thank too. You. Dixie, how long have you been a member at, or how have how long have you been involved at uh, Bethel? Um, I was baptized actually at Bethel in on Easter Sunday in 2010. Um, uh -huh. Pastor Armiger was our oh, yeah. shepherd then, and uh -huh. um, I had just decided my sister and a couple of other friends. Um, were members and I had been going for a while and decided this feels good uh. and the people the people at Bethel just you can't leave them <laughs> you want to be with them and and that's the that's the good part uh, that's great yeah because I drive a distance. I'm, I live in Crete, Illinois. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> not too far from the state line. Um, uh -huh. But uh, it's, I, I pass other Lutheran churches en route to Bethel. Uh -huh. um, but it's, it's worth the drive. Mm -hmm. oh, great. Well, it's wonderful to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Bye.